All right, so I wanted to quickly make a video, hopefully quickly, about torque speed characteristic curves. Okay, and it's because I think this is really important and I really want to make sure people have this, you know, down really well before they go into the lab and answer the questions that I have at the end as well. Okay, so uh, what I have, I, I've drawn some stuff over here, one of which is a pretty classic example of a torque speed characteristic curve where it goes like this, it increases for a bit and then it starts to go down. Okay. Um, Right off the bat, I will say that, first of all, this kind of goes against something that a lot of people have a misconception about, which is that for a motor, as speed increases, torque is going to decrease, okay? And the other way around, if you have decreasing speed, you have increasing torque, okay? They kind of think that the torque speed curve is something like a decreasing function, like this line over here, okay? But that's definitely not the case. We can see that at this point over here, as we go from here to here, our torque is actually increasing with speed, okay? And then it reaches a point and it tips over the other way. Okay, but that's just something I wanted to address, a subtle point, okay? But to uh, help move the discussion along, I've uh, split this region over here, this curve, into three different regions. The low slip region, moderate slip region, and high slip region, okay? Now, notice this terms, these terms over here, all of them involve the word slip, okay? And we know that refers to the slip ratio. And hopefully you guys have that down now. The slip ratio refers to, is a way of describing how far your motor's mechanical rotational speed how slow is that or, you know, how far off is that from the synchronous speed? Okay, that speed at which the rotating magnetic field is spinning at, okay? So, for example, if I'm at a point here, that's some amount of um, um, uh, slip ratio. If I'm farther along down here, this is a higher slip ratio. And if I'm really close to the synchronous speed, then I'm almost at zero with my slip ratio, okay? This is my S equals one slip ratio. This is my S equals zero over here, okay? And most of the curve is somewhere in between, all right? So that's one thing. And so that's why uh, it makes sense that this would be called the low slip region, moderate and high, because slip region, slip ratio increases in that direction. So as I go from here to here, this is zero, this is one. I'm increasing my slip ratio as I go that way. Okay. Uh, so that's one thing that, that makes sense on this first wording over here and what slip means. But what about why, how I've bordered these regions? Okay. That um, uh, comes into play and that will hopefully help you understand the behavior of this curve. Okay, so let's put that aside for a second and remember what I noted that this is the direction of increasing slip ratio that way. All right, so I've written down two equations over here and hopefully they will be key in understanding why the curve looks the way it is. Okay, so for one, I have this torque equation over here and this is derived many times uh, in the book, at least the book I used when I was in class. I'm not sure if you guys have a book or if he's just going off lectures, but hopefully you've seen at some point something that looks like this where the torque is proportional to the magnetic field of the rotor is also proportional to the magnetic field overall in the machine. And some sine or cosine term over here, here's a cosine. Uh, don't worry too much about it, okay? Because the book does derive this and there is a way to derive this, but I don't need to go into, into that, okay? But here, I have a torque equation uh, and that helps me, you know, know the behavior of the torque with respect to these quantities over here, okay? Uh, so that's one thing, I've written down this equation. I've also written down this equation over here, which says that the rotor electrical frequency is equal to the stator electrical frequency multiplied by the slip ratio, okay? Uh, and that's a, a very important quantity over here, and it tells you that the, the rotor electrical frequency, those sinusoids that are being induced, those induced voltages and currents that are in the rotor, okay? They're not of the same frequency as that 60 hertz, for example, that you put into the stator, okay? So you might excite the stator with 60 hertz three-phase current, uh, but what might actually be in the rotor might be like three hertz or two hertz or 10 hertz, depending on the slip ratio. Okay, so that's a very, very important thing actually to remember. Like that's huge. That makes a big difference and is a big reason why this curve looks the way it is, okay? And why is that the case? I can actually explain that right away. So think about this, the rotor electrical frequency. Okay, so that refers to the frequency of those sinusoidal voltages and currents in the rotor circuit. So remember the rotor is kind of this enclosed thing, okay? It's only uh, linked magnetically to the stator, but there's no electrical connection, all right? So it's kind of its own circuit, all right? And uh, hopefully you know the circuit involves, you know, a resistance, okay, that describes the resistance of the coil, and an inductance that describes the flux leakage and, uh, and all those quantities, okay? So there's some reactance involved with the rotor circuit, and that's the key thing. There's a reactance involved. And what do we know about reactance? If it's an inductance, then we know that the reactance increases with frequency, okay? So right off the bat, looking at this over here, if my slip ratio is high, then my rotor frequency is gonna be higher and higher. As this increases, my rotor frequency increases. If my slip ratio is really small, then my rotor frequency, uh, electrical frequency is gonna be small, okay? 
And in turn, this corresponds to how strong the reactance is. So high frequency, high reactance. Low frequency, low reactance, okay? And in the middle of all that business, the resistance of my coil and my rotor, it stays the same. It doesn't really change too much, okay, with frequency. All right, so that's the key thing to realize here. Okay, so now that we've pointed this out, we can come back to this curve and explain why it looks the way it is, okay? So let's start over here, okay? Usually books and uh, people like to explain it starting at this point in the curve instead of this point, all right? So we'll start over here. What does this point correspond to? This is pretty much when S is almost equal to zero, all right? And we call this the no load point, okay? I'm gonna label all these points uh, at some point. I'll pause the video and label them, but we'll call this for now the no load point, okay? Why is that the case? Because if you put no load on your induction motor shaft, okay, and you just, you know, excite it with some voltage, it's going to spin as fast as it can because there is very little things to resist it. Normally there's a load to resist the, you know, this, this rotation, but if there's nothing there, the only thing resisting the rotation is friction and windage, and that's going to be very small, uh, hopefully, you know, the motor can, can uh, you know, go against it, and so your motor is going to spin pretty fast. Okay, so that's the no load point over here. Your motor is spinning pretty fast, uh, but it's not, you know, outputting a lot of torque because it doesn't need to uh, overcome any torque. Okay, so that's my S equal, you know, approximately equal to zero. The slip ratio is pretty small because you can see that if it's spinning, if the motor is rotating as uh, over here, it's pretty close to the synchronous uh, speed. So the slip ratio will be small. Okay. So what does that mean in terms of these quantities that I pointed out over here? Okay. If the slip ratio is small, notice that my rotor electrical frequency is also going to be small. Okay, if this is small, this is my 60 hertz, it's constant. If this is small, this is also small. If my rotor electrical frequency is small, that means the reactances in my rotor circuit, those are also small. Okay, and we said that there's a resistance there in my rotor circuit. Okay, so think about it like this now. If I have a resistance and a really small reactance, okay, it's as if that reactance isn't even there and I just have a resistance. Okay, why do I point this out? Well, you see this over here, this term over here, this cosine of theta, well, guess what? That's actually rep that actually represents the power factor of my rotor circuit, okay? So what's the power factor of something that's pretty much exactly resistive, okay? And it's very small, you know, very small amount of reactance. That means almost a power factor of one, okay? So at this point over here, my rotor circuit it has a power factor of one, okay? So that's interesting to note. That's very interesting. We'll keep that in mind, okay? Uh, the other thing I'll note is what about this other term over here, this BR? What's the rotor's magnetic field at this point, okay? Is it going to be high or low? Well, let's think about it, okay? Um, if you're at this point over here, okay, and, and you have a small amount of torque, and your slip ratio is pretty small, you can kind of look again in, in the book and hopefully through your lectures, you're going to find that the induced voltage, because the slip ratio is very small, there's very little relative speed between the electrical, the you know, the synchronous rotating magnetic field and the rotor, okay? There's very little relative speed between them, which means the induced voltage is going to be small. You can go back to that induced voltage equation from like, you know, many chapters ago and many times we've come across it. If you go back to that, you're going to see that relative velocity term is going to be close to zero, which means the induced voltage in the rotor is small. And what does that mean? That means there's very small amount of current. And what does current corresponds to? Well, that corresponds to the magnetic field of the rotor. Okay. So at this point, we have a power factor that's close to one and we have a very small magnetic field. Okay. And then as far as these other two, this B net and this K, well, trust me on this, they're going to be pretty much constant. As we go along this curve, these don't change. The only things that change are these two quantities. And what you're going to find is they kind of actually fight each other as they go along the curve. Okay. And that is pretty much the entire reason why the curve looks the way it is. Okay. So, all right. So we, we came up, we talked about this point. S equals, you know, approximately equals zero. We have very low frequency, very low reactance. That means power factor of one. And we also said induced voltages are low. Uh, so currents are low, so magnetic field is low. Okay, so let's go up a little bit. What happens as we start to go along the curve? So we have we are having increasing slip ratio. Okay, well for one thing we can see this one pretty clearly. If this is increasing, our rotor electrical frequency is starting to increase, which means the reactance of our rotor circuit is also starting to increase, which means now the power factor because the reactance is starting to go up. That power factor, as you guys hopefully should know by now, that's going to go down. Okay, so this term is actually starting to decrease. And what is this? All this is equal to the torque, okay? So if this term is decreasing and none of these are changing, the torque should be decreasing, okay? But what do we see? The torque is still actually going up as we go this way, all right? So what does that mean? This BR term is the only other thing that's changing, we said, okay? That means that that must be increasing. And yes, it is because we, because as you go right, uh, uh, left, sorry, and your slip ratio increases, 
What does that mean? That means your voltage induced also increases. All right. And if the induced voltages are higher, you have higher currents. Higher currents means higher magnetic field. Okay. So as we're going along over here in this region, we see that even though this power factor is going down, the magnetic field is increasing faster than this is going down. And so as an overall result, this term is increasing. It's going up. And so that's what we're seeing over here. Okay. And especially what we see is that in this low slip region, okay, it's almost pretty much a line in this region over here. And you see that proportional relationship that people kind of think about with torque and speed. As you go less speed, you have higher torque and the other way around. This region is what people are talking about, okay? And it's because most of the time motors are actually operating somewhere in this region, okay? Or like about here, all right? But notice something. Once I go into this moderate region, my, my curve, if you can kind of tell, it was concave up here. Now it's starting to be concave down. And what does that mean? That means that, that the amount of increase in my torque with that, you know, same uh, incremental, incremental increase in the uh, slip ratio is starting to be less, okay? The, the, the torque is starting to increase less and less as I go up, all right? And at some point, I reach a peak over here where my slope is zero, okay? And what is that peak? First of all, that peak over there, that's called the pull-out torque, okay? That's the peak torque. It's called pull-out torque. I'll write all these terms out in a second. So we said this was no load. We have pull-out torque over here. And I didn't mention it, but we'll, this point here is actually called full load torque. Okay, but anyways, this is pull out torque over here. And what you're going to find is at this point, the power factor, by the way, this whole time the power factor was decreasing. As we went along, because the frequency was increasing, the reactance was increasing, which means the power factor went down. The whole time as we were going along here, this, this term was decreasing. But up to this point, this incre the increasing BR, the increasing magnetic field was able to compensate. Okay, and this whole time as we go as we go left with increasing s, this is still going to be increasing. However, what we find is at this peak point, the power factor is now starting to take over. This one is decreasing a whole lot faster than the magnetic field term. Okay, and that's why we see now at this point as we go farther as the slip ratio passes this point, now we're in the high slip region, which means that as you increase your slip ratio, your torque starts to go down. And we see the sort of opposite relationship between torque and speed that you might that, than you might expect. Okay, and so it keeps going down. And once we're in this region, this cosine term is totally dominating this increasing magnetic field term. So remember, this is still increasing. As we go, this is still going higher and higher. However, the cosine term is going down a lot faster. And so that's what we're seeing over here. Until we reach this point, this is when S equals 1. And guess what? This is means your this means your motor is not moving at all. Okay, and also the, uh, this point over here, we call that the starting torque. Okay, uh, and that makes sense. We started over here, but if we had started over here, you imagine your motor is initially stationary and you're starting to, you know, move it. You, this is your starting torque over here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pause and label the torques I've went, uh, uh, I've, you know, said, mentioned as I went along the curve. But hopefully that explanation kind of helped sink in why the curve is the way it is, okay? It's based on this equation and this idea of increasing frequency and how it relates to the power factor, all right? So I'm going to pause for now.